Okay, so you're going to an interview possibly to be an equipment shop manager, aka turf technician, lead mechanic, wherever it's at. Uh, they probably have a whole fleet of machines, but you are the frontline soldier. When things break, it makes your, uh, your boss's overhead come down on him, which means your boss is going to come down on you, and it's just going to be a horrible working atmosphere. Your job is to keep that equipment running, keep the company running, and keep your boss happy. Here's some quick tips to help you do that. Now, in my case, we have a course here with a variety of machines. And this is a career where typically, if you're an auto mechanic, it helps a little bit, but not really, because this is a whole different animal in itself, and there's a lot to learn about these machines. Uh, for instance, a lot of these machines have uh, lift cylinders and pumps and uh, blades, reels, bed knives, things like that that an automobile typically wouldn't. So if you're thrown into the mix and you're looking for a job and you see a job for a mechanic as an equipment shop manager, um, there's a lot you're going to need to learn. And hopefully uh, they have the time to train you rather than just take the job and throw you in the mix and expect that you're going to excel right away. Now... If you're getting a job at a course, typically the equipment shop manager, you're going to be the first one on the grounds that day. You're going to open up the shop and uh, you're going to know you have to have a really good relationship with your boss, with your superintendent. It's almost like a marriage. You guys have to be on the same page about everything. And uh, you would typically talk to them the night before about any issues that may have came about when you left that day and things that are going out the next morning that need to be ready. Because if you don't have that communication, it's just always going to be a mess, and there's going to be a lot of frustration in your, uh, in your work atmosphere. So uh, you want to open up the shop. You're gonna, I typically arrive around between 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I will. first thing I will do is I will take a look at uh, my shop bay, which is right here. All right, this is all of... Uh, my tools, that's my office back there. All right, but when you come in, you will see, well, at this place anyway, there will be machines in the garage. Uh, anything that is broken down and needs repair. In this case, it's the winter. I'm pulling in my own machines. There's not really machines going out on the daily. Um, these are projects I'm in the middle of, but in the busy season, you'll come in, and the way I have it set up is I tell them, Make sure everything has a tag. So if I walk in in the morning, jot down just the basics of what's wrong with it. And also write down when it did it. Were you operating it when it happened? Because there's nobody here at 4.30 in the morning to give me an idea. And that would really help me diagnose this machine a lot quicker so that I can get it back out. Uh, another thing you might be responsible for is going around just checking all the oils, the gas, things like that. Uh, it's all about timing when, you, uh, when you're working on a course. You, the guys need to get out there. They need to get things done by a certain time before the course opens. So the less time they spend tinkering around with the machines, uh, the more time efficient, the more time they have out on the course to get the job done. And that's going to make your, uh, your, the actual owners or the committee of the course a lot happier because the jobs are getting done, which makes your boss a lot happier, which makes you a lot happier because your boss is happy with you. All right, so you, you may have to come in, get uh, whatever needs to be fixed, get it fixed, but also find the time to go around and whatever's going out, just check all the fluids on it, start it up, make sure the battery's not dead. If it needs to be jumped, get it jumped, get it warmed up. Uh, there's a lot to do. You have about maybe an hour and a half window to uh, get a lot of this stuff done every morning. Now, keep things organized all right at the end of the day i know the guys are tired they come in and they park machines a lot of times wherever the the first available spot is but that's not always going to work if you're trying to meet a schedule every day so you want to try to correspond with the guys that are using these machines at the end of the day this is where you prefer that it be parked so in the morning if another guy is being on that machine or we got to have a whole bunch of machines going out at once there's not a traffic jam or you don't have to move a bunch of stuff to get to that machine. Now, a good rule of thumb is basically 
just pull out. You'll know after you get into the job. Actually, about two, three weeks into the job, you're going to know what normally goes out every day. So what you might want to do is when you come in, get those machines fired up, get them ready, check those oils, and pull them outside. They're going to be uh, jumped on anyway. It eliminates a lot of traffic jams inside the shop when they try to pull the machines out. Now, this is what a shop looks like. All right, you can see that everything gets kind of crammed in a shop. All right, there's a lot of different types of machines. And you can see here we have this cart, which would be blocking in some of these machines. You have some machines here that are blocking in these machines. Now, if these machines don't go out on the daily, and that one does, you're going to have a traffic jam in the morning trying to move all this stuff and get it out. So that goes back to staying uh, in good communication with your superintendent and find out what's going out in the morning so that when you get in, you can get all this stuff ready for him. And I'm telling you, it's going to make his life a lot easier. And it's going to make uh, your job a little more secure by always keeping the daily operations running smoothly. Have parts available. Know what parts are commonly breaking on these machines or the equipment and order extra. All right, so when a machine does break down, you don't have it sitting in the garage for three days just waiting on something really small. Just dedicate yourself a small thing with everything labeled on it. So when something goes down, you know exactly what box you want to go to to pull out those parts. And you want to stock up on the most common parts. Keep your, your, uh, your shop really clean. I can't tell you. It's, um, when you're in mid-season, how backed up your shop can get sometimes. It's going to feel like days where just every machine wants to break down or something go wrong. So if you constantly keep your shop clean and keep your tools organized, you're going to be able to work more efficiently and faster because you're going to know where everything's at and you're not going to be tripping on stuff. At the end of the day, I make sure every single tool is accounted for. After I'm done working on something, I put that tool right back in its spot. Like I know where everything is supposed to be in here. If I need to come over here and grab a punch for something, I know where my punches are. If I need to grab a sledgehammer or a hammer, I know where the hammers are. I know exactly where everything's at. All right, keep all of your, uh, your chemicals, keep them organized, keep them face out. If you need to grab something, you know exactly where it's at. Find a good system on paperwork to uh, manage everything that you do and also models, serial numbers. If you got to call a company and you got to order something, you don't want to run out to the machine every time and look underneath for the serial number. If your establishment doesn't have an inventory, a database on paper or on the computer, do one yourself. These I had to do myself. Whenever I'm calling something, I can flip right through here to that machine and give the person on the phone the serial number, the uh, the model number, engine size, stuff like that. Keep a maintenance log. This one I made myself also. When you uh, have a lot of equipment, you tend to lose track of what you worked on and when you worked on it. All right? And also, this is things around the shop. If you see things that need to be done or that are going bad, you can start making an estimate sheet. These I made up myself also. All right, it's every single machine that I know has an issue and things that I foresee going wrong with it. And I can show this to my superintendent with an estimate on there for him already. And I can say, hey, we're gonna need this. It's gonna go bad soon. This is how much it costs. When you do have machines pile up, and you will, you're not gonna be able to keep everything running all day long because there's gonna come to a, a time where you need to order the parts and it's gonna take days for them to get in. And while you're waiting days for those parts to come in, you're going to have other machines break down and they're gonna pile up, all right? So work orders or a tag system, something that you can put on the machines when they, because when you go back to them three weeks later and parts finally arrive, and let's say you have the machine apart, you're not gonna remember. You're really not uh, and of what, what bolt went where or what, what was wrong with the machine. So you're re-diagnosing again. So keep work orders on everything. All right, some of these machines I have apart already and everything has a different issue and they all look the same. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna remember when I go back to that machine unless I wrote down exactly what is wrong with it and keep a nice little checklist there. What the problem is, what it needs, if the parts were ordered, this one the parts weren't ordered. <clears throat> this one is uh, actually on standby because we're trying to locate a different part for it right now. But you wanna keep a good system so that you can just grab something and know what it needs. Now this one, I can't remember what's wrong with it, but we'll come over here. This is, uh, all right, this one is just smoking really bad. It may need some new rings, all right? There's nothing being ordered for that. This still has to be ripped apart and diagnosed. All right, so if I look at this one here, all right, the oil was changed on this. That's what this pink tag means. And it just needs a grind. So this just has to go up on the grinder and that one's done. All right, but I'm able to look at these and I'm able to tell exactly what's wrong with them. Not only that, when your boss comes in the shop, sometimes he's not around when these machines pile up. He's able to look at them really fast and see what's wrong with these machines and it helps him plan a little bit, okay? He can look at the work order and say, okay, this machine's gonna be down for a good three days. I'm not gonna plan around using this machine. All right, that's gonna make him happy. It's gonna make him uh, make your job a lot more secure. When it comes time for a pay raise, they're gonna, uh, they're gonna wanna keep you at that establishment because, because of your organization. And uh, it's a little job security just by making your own organization skills, even if that company doesn't have it. Also, another thing you wanna do is for every machine that you have, your manuals. Learn your manuals. Well, you don't have to memorize them. But when I say learn, I mean put them somewhere so you know exactly where they are for these machines. Keep them organized. Depending on your establishment, they may not be organized. But here, we have all the machines labeled, organized. If I need a question on a machine, you can always refer back to the good old manual. Just keep them organized and know where they're at when you need them. And last but not least, if you're we're gonna get a job at a course uh, where the grounds are the, uh, what the machines are going on, a uh, golf course, then basically all of the weight falls on to you and the superintendent, okay? Because the course is only the course because of the mechanics expertise and getting those reels really fine-tuned, understanding what height of cut means, understanding how to do it, uh, getting the reels nice and sharp, making sure they're cut even, making sure the machines aren't leaking fluid. Um, you, you leak fluid, you damage a green out there. You damage a green, you're talking anywhere from $10,000, $20,000 to repair a green. Yeah, that's not a good look if it uh, falls on you for a machine error. Now, machines do break, they, you know, things happen, but on the reels, you might want to take time and go study how to sharpen reels, um, different heights of cut, and what the different heights of cuts uh, are used on. So for the greens, you're gonna have one height of cut. For approaches and tees, you're gonna have a different height of cut. And then when you get to your fairways, it's another height of cut, your roughs, and so forth. So you wanna get a good knowledge and understanding of that because a lot of that is gonna come into play in your job. Most of the time, when you're not working on a machine that's broken, you're going to be back lapping or sharpening reels or readjusting them. And they have to be readjusted sometimes daily, all right? So if you're going to an interview, take some time out and look up uh, reel and bed knives and how to sharpen them and what they do and height of cut and try to get a good understanding of all of that. And uh, cause that's primarily gonna be um, most of your workload is making sure everything is cutting properly and, and the grounds are looking great out there. And once in a while, take, a, take some time and go around the course. Look at the grounds, look at the cut. Just, you, you'll know how your machines are operating, all right? And that's gonna help you better understand uh, the machines and what they need and maybe talk to the operators and let them know that, listen, if there's any problems at all, if you notice this, you notice that, <clears throat> don't be afraid to come talk to me. I've learned a lot of operators are afraid to uh, talk to you because they, uh, they know they're giving you work when the machine breaks. And that's it. So hopefully these tips will help you if you're going for a job interview. Um, 
it'll help you have a better understanding if you do some research before you go about the job. And when you're talking to the guy, you'll sound a little bit more knowledgeable if you uh, just kind of relay some of the stuff that I did in my video on what you uh, plan to do to help their shop run a little bit better. All right, I uh, will see you next time. Don't forget, hit subscribe below and give me a like. And uh, if you need any questions on machinery, feel free to come back to my channel. I upload them daily. See you guys.